Hello, everyone. This is Maciej Jemanczuk here. I'm brand ambassador at ccfound.com. And today we are with Michael Pearl, COO of Kyrobo. And today we'll talk about the problems that crypto users face and how their company, Kyrobo, are finding solutions to solve them. Hi, Michael. Pleased to meet you. Hi, Maciej. It's a pleasure to be here. Happy to meet you. Yeah, happy to finally meet you. I saw our recent interview with uh, with you and Kasper, and I was really interested about the feature that you told us before, and I heard that you're launching it today. So this solves another major problem in the crypto space, problem of inheritance. Uh, am I right? So uh, with your permission, I'd like to give you guys the bigger picture um, and, and then we'll dive in into the product. Uh, we're uh, extremely excited. You caught us on, on, on exactly the right day because we're launching today. But I do want to give you the, the bigger perspective. So Kirobo essentially uh, started off with the mission to make uh, crypto and DeFi in specific as simple as online banking. And as you guys know, you've been in this field for, for a very long time. You know that it's very far from that, right? I'm not even talking about mass adoption. The current uh, systems that we have are very cumbersome. That's why, uh, you know, unfortunately, crypto is a little bit niche and DeFi is even more niche, right? And we want to bring it to the masses. We want people to use it uh, just, just as they interact with online banking, right? I'm sure that your mother and my mother use online banks, uh, but... Um, when it comes to crypto, it sounds like uh, science fiction. Um, and the reason for that, uh, at least one of the major reasons, are the uh, dangers of losing your money. And we basically isolated, we, we identified three main use cases uh, in which people are losing their money. By the way, it's not only us. Um, um, uh, chain analysis have uh, conducted the research, a very extensive one. And every once in a while, I mean, you don't need a research. You can just, you know, go through Twitter and see uh, many people complaining about losing their money due to this and that. So essentially, we identify three problems, right? One is sending money to the wrong address, uh, something that is a pain point for many, many people. Everyone feels that sting in the stomach when, when he or she sends um, uh, money to another person. And... Um, Obviously, there are, you know, along the years, there have been uh, different mechanisms to, to, to mitigate this, right? I'm, I'm sending you a ping, and then I'm, I'm calling you and checking if the, the money has come through, and you uh, refresh your ether scan and so on and so forth. But still, it's, it's far from being a solution. So that is actually something that we dealt with. Uh, we have a system that is running, um, the safe transfer. Uh, it has processed over $1.7 billion uh, thus far. Uh, and we managed to retrieve $10 million to users that sent money in error. So wow. check on this one. Uh, the next two things that we want to tackle are, as you mentioned, uh, inheritance and backup. So we all know those stories of people you know, losing either their cold wallets or losing access to, to their warm wallets uh, or you know, other use cases of, of, of people that cannot uh, approach their wallet. They forget their seed phrase and so on. Um, you know, again, there is no viable solution for that one. And we addressed this um, uh, and found a solution for it. Essentially, it's um, at, least, uh, at least in principle, it sounds very simple, right? You use our vault, which I will dive in in a second and I will explain about it. And you are able to define a backup wallet that will basically seize the, uh, the ownership of, uh, of your assets uh, once you know you lose access to your original wallet. And the last problem is, as I mentioned, inheritance, right? Um, we believe, and uh, there, there, again, there are several researchers about it, that uh, in the next decade, about a billion people will, will hold crypto. Maybe even more, who knows, right? If crypto becomes mainstream and if more countries uh, like El Salvador will make it a legal tender, we can expect billions of people to hold crypto. Now, as you know, life happens and people unfortunately pass away. And uh, the problem is that the family is dealing with a double tragedy because they need to, you know, they're sorry for the person that they lost and they're also sorry for the money that uh, he held and they cannot uh, receive. So uh, th those are the two problems that we're tackling now with the vote. Okay, 
I will dive in a little bit later into the vault, but that's just to give you an introduction on the types of services that we provide at the moment. And that's awesome. That's definitely something that is needed now in crypto and like, like the inheritance sending the undo button, sending the money to wrong address, the backup bullets, like it's something that's gonna definitely, in my opinion, revolutionize the whole crypto industry. Because as you said, crypto now is quite limited for the people who kind of have a knowledge and time to, to deal with it. But for like, as you said, as you gave the example of your mother or my mother or like people from the quite older generation, they don't have as much knowledge and patience and and stuff like that to be able to actually get into it. So uh, that's great. That's going to definitely help with mass adoption and stuff like that. So, Yeah, in my opinion, it's also amazing. And you're going over every major problem right now. And will you go for another problem? Because one of the issues that I saw recently, I wanted to help my friend who wanted to, she was never heard about crypto, but she had to transfer USDT. Mm. And the first problem was how you can easily buy it. By, but let's forget about this for the moment. But then she had to remember the address and what, what are the addresses, how they work. And the another problem is to simplify this, to reach, potentially get closer to mass adoption and to scale it. Because if you could like send it to an email address or a nickname and without compromising the security of the network, this is like another issue. Are you aiming for this also? So I can tell you guys that we have also a B2B solution uh, that um, is helping now companies uh, that are interacting with crypto. I'm sure that just like you and just like you, Robo, and even companies that are not in the crypto sphere, but they interact with their clients in crypto, uh, we're allowing them to, uh, to send uh, uh, their crypto through our system. And uh, inside that solution, we have a whitelist. We basically have an address book. And you can define okay. that, you know, Casper, uh, that's his wallet. And if he changes his wallet, he can tell us. And if he didn't tell us and we sent it to his older wallet, to, to his prior wallet, then we can just cancel the transaction. Right? Yeah, so undo it. Undo it. Yeah. So uh, we do look into now, now that the system is stable and the, the system has gone through the stress test, we are looking into ways of how to you know, make it friendlier and, uh, you know, creating an address book is definitely on the table. And then that's one of the things that uh, we would like to do. So you're actually, you're actually, you actually solved it and you're like improving it to, to make it work better. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Could, could you now like dive a little bit deeper into the vault, liquid vault? Okay. So I'll dive into the vault, but with your permission, I want to give you the bigger picture again. We'll okay. zoom out again, okay? All because right. in order to understand the vault, and I'm, I'm super excited about talking about it because the opportunities that the vault is going to bring into the crypto space is tremendous. I mean, inheritance and backup are big enough, right? I mean, as far as I know, we're the first to solve that problem. And we're, you know, this is our message to the world right now. But it's only the beginning because the inheritance and the backup are only two first use cases for the vault. Because essentially what we managed to do with the vault and just to give you on, on the, just the premise of the, of the discussion, just to, to give you the basics, right? The vault is essentially an on-chain wallet. It's a set of 40 different smart contracts that are interacting together. And it's a unique technology that allows you to do many things. Okay. Now, uh, uh, by the way, it's, it's fully decentralized and uncustodial. The blockchain holds the money. We don't hold the money. So what happens is the, well, with the vault and what the people will experience in a few hours when they open their vault, and we are already have a very long waiting list of people that want to, uh, to open their vaults. Essentially, once they deploy the vault, their original wallet becomes their identity. Okay, it's their login, it's their access to the vault. Then they can choose to move their crypto from their original wallet to the vault, to the on-chain wallet. And once it's in the vault, they can secure it, right? They can uh, add a backup mechanism, an inheritance mechanism. And in the very near future, they will be able to interact with DeFi from the vault. 
So whatever, wh whatever it is that you do now with your MetaMask, you can do with the vault in a few months, okay? In, in, in Q1 of, of 2022, maybe even in the beginning of Q1. So essentially, once we integrate the DeFi uh, features, then it's essentially your wallet, but upgraded. It's a wallet 2.0, okay? Right. But that, that is only the beginning because the technology behind the vault allows us to do many different things. So I'm just gonna give you a taste of it because I, I can't obviously disclose everything, right? But what it allows us to do, it allows us to condition future transactions, okay? You can predefine a future transaction. You can sign it with your MetaMask so you know that it will be executed and you're conditioning it by many different things. So the backup and inheritance, they're activated by time. We have a timer, right? Uh, obviously the smart contract doesn't know that the person has passed away. So uh, what we do is we set up a timer and other conditions and once the timer lapses, then the funds are being distributed. So that one is conditioned by time. But imagine if you can condition future transactions by uh, exchange rate, by um, you know different market uh, data, or even by the weather. Okay? Weather, I was about to say that. <laughs> any, any feed that you guys can imagine that someone thinks that has uh, some sort of a value for uh, for the uh, you know for, for this conditioning, right? If someone wants to set up a rule that you know I want to buy or sell or send or whatever, if something happens. Imagine the, the, the unlimited amount of, of opportunities here that this technology will allow us to do. And if you, if you uh, introduce into it, and we already have this ability to add NFTs into the system. I mean, right now the, the wallet, uh, the, the vault already supports NFTs, but imagine if okay. you can condition things on, based on NFTs, that will blow your mind, right? I'm just giving you some hints because I cannot disclose everything. But imagine mm -hmm. if you, you know, you hold a certain NFT and that allows, you know, me to know something about you and then we can condition future transactions, future buys and sells and trades on this one. So the opportunities are, are endless. Uh, we have a very long roadmap and uh, while we're, you know, working on it, we have more and more ideas. It's just a matter of executing them and we'll, we'll, we're, we're going to do it uh, during the, the next year. Wow, amazing. Right. This definitely sounds like something something really, really big that can actually revolutionize the blockchain industry. Also, uh, today I saw the price of Kairobo token and it seems that you're you're on the wave. You're going against Bitcoin <laughs> falling down right now. So there are a lot of people who who see the potential and see in which place it can evolve. So you mentioned that you can create future transactions based on many conditions so i i don't want to get into like technical stuff but i assume that it uses oracles and like things like that to capture uh, data from outside the blockchain like from the real world yeah so i'm gonna tie your two questions together okay you you asked me about the coin and then you asked me about uh, the technology yes so uh, so the system does and will use oracles and other sources of, of, of information that the blockchain trusts and verifies and so on. You're right about that. But I have to tell you something. Uh, a smart contract cannot make a decision on its own, right? For instance, if the time has lapsed for the timer that I just mentioned with the inheritance, the smart contract needs to understand that the time has lapsed and someone needs to wake him up. So for that purpose, someone needs to activate it to send it a transaction. Now, given the fact that we're fully, obviously we could do it on our own, right? But we're not gonna do that because we want to be fully decentralized. We want to move to decentralization to have the community activating the system. So what we're going to introduce during the next quarter is essentially the ability of the community to activate the system. And all this will be powered by the Kiro token. So the people will, will activate the system with Kiro, which will, will, will gain its utility beyond the utility it has right now. It will get many other uses, right? Of validators and miners that will validate the system. They will be rewarded in Kiro. And we have some more surprises coming that I cannot disclose right now, but the Kiro token is going to have 
many other features and many other roles in that system. Essentially, it's going to be the native token of the system because as I mentioned, there are so many use cases and we, we, we will also open the system to, to third parties. So if, for instance, if you guys want to develop something based on that system, and if you have an idea that maybe we haven't thought of, you're welcome to come and, and to, to develop something based on that system. It's going to be fully open and people can interact with the system. And obviously, again, the native token of that system will be, will be key role. So everything comes together as you see. And uh, very soon, all this will be, we can disclose everything and people can understand, uh, you know, the full complexity, but, but also the simplicity behind the system. Amazing. So building the whole ecosystem, then people can also build on top of that to create other amazing solutions for blockchain. Uh, I was about to ask you then uh, after that about another problem on the mm -hmm in the crypto industry volatility of the volatility of the prices and everything but i, I think you already kind of answered that by creating conditional transactions inside the vault so so, so you can secure uh, volatility problems in future so this kind of solves it but maybe you can t uh, tell me a, a little bit more if you're planning to do other solutions in terms of like solving volatility problems? So um, let's just put it this way. Uh, the ability exists and we're exploring it, okay? Um, if, if you ask me if the, if, the, if the platform can produce some sort of a solution of that sort, then definitely, definitely. That is something, and again, it's something that is lacking now in the decentralized world, right? Uh, if you uh, if you go on on a centralized exchange, you can just do a stop loss and you can do a limit order and so on, and you can control you know you can mitigate this vol volatility. But when it comes to DEXs, except for you know a few very specific use cases that are very limited, you don't have that ability. So the technology definitely definitely has a solution for that. When it's going to be useful and by whom, you'll have to wait and see. But um, you know, Kirobo, Kirobo um, has already found a solution. Great. So uh, I'm looking forward to all that you're talking about. I'm like really excited to be honest, and it makes me want to hop in and get some Cairo, get some more Cairo from the market. Yeah, and maybe right now we can talk about uh, education and adoption. How can we achieve that? How how can we get more people into crypto? Sure. So I think that, that that's where you guys come in, right? I mean, you, you're, you're doing something amazing with regards to education. I think that, by the way, you know, I think that the, this kind of complements what we're doing, right? In a sense that you need to have a, a, a better system technologically, you know, front end, UI, UX, whatever, right? You need to, hands down, you need to have a better system that will give more confidence to the people, to the users, and that will be much more straightforward. But all this has to be complemented by a you know, very powerful educational you know, hubs and, and efforts and ecosystems that will educate the people because you know, there's only that much you can do to simplify the system. People need to be educated. So uh, Amachi, I think that you know, it's, a, it's a great segue for you to dive in and to tell us a little bit about what you guys do. And uh, yeah. perhaps we'll, but perhaps we'll uh, flip uh, flip the script, and I will interview you there. Yes, definitely. Uh, I was about to say that that's why I asked this question because I wanted to think about the things that we are doing. And as you said, we're complementing each other. Our products are complementing. So in order to um, make Kairobo grow and expand its its audience, it needs more people to understand it and to educate, and that where CC Found comes in. So we're basically building a decentralized social media that aims to become the biggest wisdom and knowledge marketplace on the internet. And we're aiming to simplify a lot of things and order, order uh, knowledge and all, all the information content in way easily than it works right now. So we want to resign 
um, from attention grabbing algorithms, all that nonsense that makes people lose time on the platforms. Organize everything more like Wikipedia, easier way and provide maximum levels of monetization of content to the users. So give them all the possibilities to earn uh, on what they know, what they are good in to incentivize them to take part in the system and to create it. Uh, on our platform also, users won't be treated as a product. So we want, don't want to sell their data. They, we want them to be uh, co-owners of the platform as a participants. So that's why we're building a decentralized autonomous organization. We, we will start a centralized and will slowly, uh, gradually decentralize to, to give the power to the people and build a meritocratic system. I think you guys are, first of all, it's amazing. It's very exciting to hear that. Casper uh, told me about the system, you know, uh, a little bit uh, when we were in Lisbon, but hearing about this on, on a deeper level, it's super exciting. Um, I think that you guys are tapping into something that is, is probably the hottest trend right now, which is creator's economy. And you know all the different content creators that now have abilities to to monetize, and I think that it's uh, definitely something that is needed now in the crypto community. A lot of people with good knowledge that you know don't have ways to spread that knowledge in an unbiased way and to get um, you know compensated for that. So I think it's 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 great what you guys are doing. Yes, uh, yes, definitely, and. Um... Another big thing that we're trying to solve, I will tell you from my perspective, because I'm a YouTuber and I earn money from ads on YouTube. But in fact, as an expert or as a person who, who is good at doing something, to monetize it in a different way, I have to move people between services. And it's a waste of time, money and resources. So I, I'd rather have to do everything on my own or hire people, which costs me money and additional time to manage them. Uh, so this is a, another issue that we're trying to solve to make it way easier for people to monetize in one place so they don't have to waste time and combat, combat and fight with attention-grabbing algorithms. Um, yes, so... I have a question. The, the, How, yeah. what, what will be the, the monetization model for the, for the content creators? Monetization model. So basically, CC Found uh, is making money or mo on margin. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll be from 20 to 100 uh, percent out of sa all sales on the platform. S and uh, this will be dictated by the user. So he can give up more of his income for mm -hmm. additional reputation points, but mm -hmm. he can earn up to 80 percent out of every sale he makes on the platform. And mm -hmm. our basic, I didn't say about our basic feature, which is Q&A, paid mm -hmm. Q&A. This is something like on Quora, but with better uh, content organization and with monetization, proper monetization without ads. So yes, this is our basic feature. And around that, we'll building other features, basically all means of monetization mechanisms that, that are available on the internet. That sounds amazing. And I'm I'm curious how you guys are gonna organize it. So let's you know let's take like a specific topic, right? Let's talk about bridges. Uh, we 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 tried to use one of the bridges, and again, obviously we're we're quite DeFi savvy, and you know it took us a while to learn you know how to do it and and what's the best way to tackle it, and what are the the, the dangers of doing that, right? Because every bridge mechanism has its own problems, and you have to to watch out from different things and Again, not going to go into that, but it's, it's something that should be, you know, understood properly. And I have to tell you that we couldn't find, you know, viable uh, sources, educational sources that can explain, you know, you can find like bits and pieces here and there. You find like a one hour YouTube video that, you know, gives you like 10 minutes of, of how to do it. And then you have to read something on a blog. So how do you guys intend to organize that so if that people need, for instance, to do a, to to use a bridge, what will they see? What will be their um, their uh, interface with the with CC phone? Yeah, uh, this is a really hard topic because uh, we believe there is no perfect way to do that, but we want to create uh, the best possible solution for that. 
Mm, I said before that we want to organize content more like on Wikipedia. So we want to introduce, of course, table of content for every uh, for every topic. So it will be mm, distributed like like a tree with all the all the topics in certain categories. But most importantly, we want to resign from attention grabbing algorithms and let the community decide what content is valuable. So uh, the basic um, sorting mechanism that will be available in, in certain categories will go from the most popular topics and people will uh, topics and answers and people will vote on certain um, answers or topics if, if they find them of a high value. And it is important to say the system is more complicated than that. It, and because not every one vote equals another vote. So you have to first become helpful to the community and build reputation around that. And that will be a multiplier of your impact on voting. So this, this is the basic uh, mechanism that will work. And this creates a lot of, because uh, have a look, there's a big problem in, social media currently because even if you provide high quality answer something that's evergreen it's being lost in the information chaos on facebook and youtube how can you achieve potentially the best answer in a certain topic if you order mm -hmm. it that way you will find the best possible answers at the top so okay. this is our ba basic structure so let me just dive into it as well because Obviously, with what much is said now, there's a danger of people upvoting, like of having an army of bots upvoting some answers, yeah. like paying people to upvote it. So basically, what we want to implement is to have one account back to one person, basically. So that's something we're still working on technologically. What are we going to do? We're probably not going to do like KYC one, but something like SMS, uh, like a you know text message um, verification. It's still in the process of of, of developing a technology, but I want to make sure that um, one account equal, equals one person to avoid what's happening on social media now that you can buy. Go on Twitter, you can like buy followers, you can buy people who are going to like your posts and you're going to look like you're popular, but you are a bad actor. So basically, I want to, we want to um, exclude bad, bad actors out of it. By yeah, that, that account. this will There's be an additional, additional thing to... Uh, authenticate and verify users. But as I mentioned before, in that meritocratic system, if you develop your position of an expert on our platform, your vote can be worth more than, let's say, 100 or 500 votes of bots. Yeah. And each yeah. time they, the people who are bots, not by people, but bots, will vote on a content that's not relevant and they keep on vo upvoting unrelevant content and wrong content their reputation point, points will go down so they'll have the less less impact on on the platform and on the content oh, I, I have a question here um how do you guys intend to attract the thought leaders and again as you said it's a meritocratic system and and obviously you want to have um you know people who are knowledgeable people who uh, have some track record behind them uh, in, in the crypto sphere. What, Sorry. What, all good, all good. Happens to the best of us, Machi. It's, it's all good. You, you, you're, you're <laughs> I didn't lucky expect that, that. You're lucky that it's it's, it's morning and my kids don't barge in. Uh, <laughs> so I was uh, I was just asking, um, how do you guys intend to attract the thought leaders and um, and uh, basically the trendsetters in the crypto sphere? So we have two ways to do that. Uh, we're starting from the position, we have already a big community in one of the biggest, actually the biggest company in crypto education space in Poland, which is a Cryptography Research Institute. Uh, our CEO, Piotr, is also a CEO of Cryptography Research Institute. And we have more than 50,000 people who are really into crypto wow. and investments. And we want to encourage them to start creating on the platform. So we'll start from our main topic for now will be investments in cryptocurrencies. So mm -hmm. also we can educate people towards like things like Kairobo and to achieve mass adoption. And we'll expand that to 
global to investments, but in English. So we'll grow that audience. And the other um, way that I mentioned before is we have a separate capital to invest in people. And we'll basically invest in, in thought leaders, people who are, who are experts, already experts on other mm -hmm. platforms to create on our, on our platform. So we have separate Sounds budget good. for that to just Sounds to good. make it viral and really push, push, push it through. Yeah, that's very smart. Uh, tell me about the found token. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll, I'll start from, let's say you're answering a question, right? Someone is answering a question and you're getting paid for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You get up to 80% out of, out of this transaction. So 20% mm -hmm. goes to uh, CC Found, our company, which will become a decentralized autonomous organization. Mm -hmm. And 50% out of that goes to, um, goes to token holders. So this is like a staking mechanism. And we call it a digital dividend. We call it a token. So people mm -hmm. are getting, uh, are incentivized to keep our token. 40% out of the margin of that 20% mm -hmm. goes to DAO treasury. So people will vote on w in which platform, in which way platform will develop and grow. And so this will basically come back to the community for developing more yeah, for features more features everything they want to mm -hmm. build in C in cc found and 10% mm -hmm. is being burned mm -hmm. so this is a deflationary mechanism in our uh, tokenomics and another thing is we already developed a second layer solution so all transactions on the platform will be um, autom automatically changed on dex to found coin so for example if you're paying for a product information product course or a closed subscription group in dollars or in zlotys in euros in whatever currency you you choose it'll be automatically changed on found token on our platform so people then can keep our found coins and become the participant of the dao that way mm -hmm. but you can also automatically sell it to whatever currency you want this oh, is... so you so so you have an on ramp off ramp basically um, um, within the system. Integrated. Yeah, yeah, and Amazing. we already developed second layer solution with zero transaction fees. So this is the thing that we're testing currently. Uh, it's nearly ready and really close to releasing our minimum viable product, our portal, which will launch very soon. We're, we're we amazing. want to tease that right now in on the internet. Sounds good. Uh, can you disclose uh, any partnerships that you're uh, working on, uh, whether with uh, you know technological companies or or others? Casper. So yes, for maybe mention our last last partnerships first. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. So yeah, for our partnerships, basically what we do now we have uh, the layer of partnerships, like technological partnerships, which our IT um, department is working with, like blockchain developers and stuff like that. But we also have quite few partners in terms of marketing. So we help each other basically. Recently, we've partnered up with uh, two projects from Vietnam uh, called Crypto War and uh, XBN as well. And that's mm -hmm. one NFT, uh, like a game, gamify NFT kind of uh, platform. And then the other is uh, just like an ecosystem, which the DeFi, uh, which the NFT gaming platform is built on. So they are really like nice people. We've decided to, to cooperate with them in terms of like marketing. So we do um, together like AMAs and basically we help each other um, in terms of uh, promotion. We have few partnerships planned for this year as well still uh, with projects from different countries. We have, we have partnered with Fanadice as well. So one of the good uh, NFT projects from Poland. Mm -hmm. um, so we have few marketing partners uh, in terms of this side, but we also have few partners in terms of technological side. Yeah, Sounds and we're good. also talking with HashUp. This is another Polish startup that's building um, something like Steam mm -hmm. for gamers, but on blockchain. So people mm -hmm. then they can own their games and resell it on the market. 
uh, so they already built something like uh, coin market cap and coin gecko gecko with all all the games listed and this I, I i believe this is a really cool thing and we want to partner with uh, with other gaming or p2e uh, projects because we mm -hmm. want to implement gamification mechanisms to to encourage people to be part of our system too and also we would love to partner with with serious technological uh, companies like Kairobo. So <laughs> this yeah. would be also great for no, us. No, guys, definitely. I think that, uh, you know, one of the keys to success and one of the keys to, you know, building a community is, is uh, you know, cooperating, right? You don't definitely. have to invent the wheel. And if, uh, you know, a company like yours is doing something amazing in the field of education, I think that we, we should support it and we should, you know, uh, help each other to succeed, and uh, we're now in in, in a, really in a series of of uh, partnerships, integrations of you know whether we're integrating our technology, you know whether it's uh, the vault or uh, this egg transfer in other companies, in wallets, in exchanges, in uh, you know payment service providers, um, you know other use cases uh, uh, that uh, will use our technology. And we're also integrating, you know, uh, technology from other suppliers because we want to give our users, you know, um, a much better, um, a much better experience, right? I mentioned that we're going to integrate DeFi into the Vault very soon, and we want to have, um, you know, the Vault users to be able to do basically anything they want inside the Vault. So I think that you know it's it's uh, mutually beneficial for for both sides to, to collaborate. And uh, yeah, it's all about creating an ecosystem and helping each other. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, we're not even competitors in any way. Actually, as we mentioned before, we're complementing each other in terms of like providing education to communities about Carabo, about great solutions that you're providing to, to the world. And this is great. And also, uh, we could also benefit from, from your system and possibly even integrate something uh, from Kairobo inside CC Found. That's I, I believe that's also doable because it's getting easier and easier to integrate things as we build uh, more things inside CC Found. I, mean, I definitely sure. rec Sounds recommend good. Kairobo all the time when somebody asks. Like we had a few situations when people were trying to send some funds and they sent the wrong address. They were asking me if I can recover it. I was like, just next time you skip, Robo. <laughs> I got to tell you a story with that respect. Uh, yesterday, uh, we received a major investment. I cannot disclose uh, the, uh, the investor and the, the amount of money invested, but uh, we'll do it very soon. But the funny thing is that, um, you know, they wanted to, to send us the, the crypto. And um, when we talked to their accounting uh, department, so they said, listen, let me ping you first. And let me send you, you know, a small transaction. Then you, 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 you come back to me. You tell me that it, it has come through. Then we'll double check that the addresses uh, are, are suitable because, you know, there's malware that can change the address when you paste it. So they have like this procedure of like one hour where you need to go through all those things in order to make sure that the money comes through. So, you know, we, know, we have a, a WhatsApp group with the, with the investors. So they were laughing about, you know, uh, about the fact that the accountant doesn't understand our system. They said, listen, you don't, you don't need that. You know, ditch that procedure. Let's do it through the Kirobo system. We did it in five minutes. You know, the accountant, I, I saved them a lot of stress. And, you know, it's just when you see that work, it's, it, it's amazing. You know, when you yeah. look at the system and how it um, basically allows you to, you know, prevent uh, uh, losing money and to prevent, you know, spending time on stupid procedures, then then it's, a, it's, it's definitely an amazing thing. Amazing. So you basically <laughs> solve the problem of your investor in, in real time. <laughs> in real time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've got right. one more question for you, Michael. Uh, sure. About the inheritance uh, feature. So basically, for example, uh, if, some, if a person who is in inheriting my money if he or she doesn't know how to use, like, doesn't know much about crypto, is there a way they can do it, like, simply, or they have to learn crypto first and then get the money? Like, do you know, do you understand my question? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, uh, first of all, uh, the way that the system works, and I'll, I'll explain it in, in a few seconds, okay? The idea is that once your uh, assets are in the vault, 
then you can decide, you know, how to back it up and how to, to basically to inherit it. So what you do is you just set up errors and the errors are essentially just wallet addresses. And mm -hmm. you decide, you know, you know, God forbid, if someone wants to, you know, leave like 50% to, to the wife, 20% to, to, to one of his kids, 20% to the other, and 10% to charity or whatever. I hope it adds up to 100 because uh, I did it. <laughs> it does, uh, I think it does. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm kidding. So, um, so say you want to do that, you just, you know, define all those errors. And once the timer lapses, and that's how the, the blockchain basically knows that, uh, you know, the person was not using the, the, the wallet, obviously, you will probably set it, up, set it up for a few years and not for, let's say, six months. And once the timer lapses and uh, the system is activated by the community again with the Kiro token, then what happens is that uh, the vault basically distributes the money to the different parties. So... If Casper, uh, you know, you are the beneficiary of, of that procedure, right? You will just receive money to your wallet, right? And you don't have to do anything. You don't have to use mm -hmm. the system. Now, we do have a way to add uh, the undo um, uh, mechanism, the set transfer mechanism to the vault. So then, uh, for instance, if you want to condition, you know, your kid getting the money by, I don't know, going to college. So you can give the pass password to your lawyer. And in the future, hint, hint, we'll have technological uh, okay. solutions that can help us with that, with verifying, you know, that the kid went to college or whatever. Uh, or, for instance, if you, as the person that, you know, is setting up the inheritance, you are, you know, you want to make sure that it doesn't work uh, by mistake or, you know, that, that the timer that you have uh, set up lapses and you forgot about it. So you can add the undo mechanism and then you will have to go through the system. But the system okay. is very is very straightforward. But I think that, anyways, once the system is going to become a standard, and I believe that it will, I think that you guys can can help us out with educating the people about how to use it and how to utilize it. Right? It's not not only about using it. When you will have so many features, you will need to educate the the the, the people on how they can get more from their mm -hmm. assets that are stored in the vault. I'm really that's looking great. forward to that. Yeah, that's awesome. And like the, the thing that you thought is thought is true, like you know, this do you implement like passwords and stuff like that? That's great because obviously, as what you said, like you want to condition someone receiving their money. That's that's awesome. So I like, sounds great. <laughs> Definitely really, answered my question. <laughs> you have really thought well about constructing it in, in different means and ways. So I'm lo looking really forward to to see how it works in real life. Yeah, so Michael, I think that's it for now. We mentioned many different topics. We talked about your new solution. We talked about CC Found. I think it, we had a great interview today. Uh, right now, we'll publish it, I think, very soon, if it will be okay with you. Sure, sure thing, guys. And I, I do encourage, you know, all your community and our community to check out CC Found and to check out Kirobo, um, especially, uh, you know, after today, once we launch the system, we're super excited about all those people uh, opening their vaults and, and interacting with the system. And I think that, you know, going to CC Found and I'm, I, I can't wait for your uh, MVP, to, you know, to see how it works. Yeah, definitely. We'll yeah. be. We'll be releasing it very soon and we'll be teasing it, creating videos. So we'll send it to you. And by the way, great ads on Kairobo. The last one, I was just laughing. Yeah, really I love that. <laughs> You're not yeah. releasing a lot of ads, but each one of them is a, <laughs> is a, is a pearl. Is a pearl. Listen, we have, a, <laughs> we, we have a, 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 an in-house video team that's doing a tremendous job. And we have a lot of talented people uh, within the company. So uh, yeah, I mean, marketing is not only about paying money; it's also about being creative and you know, um, uh, showcasing your message. So thank you. Uh, we worked hard on it, and uh, <laughs> I'm glad that you that you loved it. Yeah, I really, I really enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. Hard. <laughs> so Michael, again, thank you very much for this thank you guys. Thank you. conversation, and all the best for Kairobo and CC Found. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Bye, you. Guys.